Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Flynn, and I'm delighted to be joined this Friday, uh, almost lunchtime, uh, with Sophie Eleanor. Hey, Sophie, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm really good. I meant to mention before, like, I just love this, like, you have this perfect Newcastle background, like, in my head of, like, being in, <laughs> in like, this Newcastle house uh, with the plants in the background and everything. So, yeah, it's a uh, super cool uh, environment that you're in there. Very old Newcastle house, very Newcastle. Mm. Happy to be here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. And this is part part two of our little series. Um, we've been talking about type. I had so much fun last week. I'm really glad that um, we're going to be moving moving some type around, uh, a little bit of Photoshop, a little bit of After Effects. So I'll shut up in a second so we can get to it because we ran out of time last time. Great to see <laughs> uh, some friendly faces in the chat. Dee's, Dee's here. Steve Festus is here as well. Barry Spencer, great to see you, Barry. Um, Gail uh, Everton as well. Super cool. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, but uh, but yeah, so maybe we'll start off with a bit of a recap of what we did uh, last week. So we can even jump over your screen now if you like. Yeah, let's do it. Look at me just trying to give you as much time as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out the gate, let's go. Yeah, let's roll. We're not mucking around. Let's get into it. <laughs> um, so a, a quick little recap from last week. So um i was creating a bit of a, a typographic piece based off um <laughs> chemist warehouse yes which we spent a bit of a bit of time explaining last week it's a weird concept um i kind of love it though but the general idea being it's very loud it's super colorful there's too many things going on it's kind of awful but great at the same time <laughs> and so last week what we were doing was starting to vector, um, I think I've got my sketch under here. Yeah, so I had made this uh, sketch, pencil sketch, and brought it into Illustrator, and I was just kind of going through a few techniques of how to vector it. So I think we did the pen tool for this area, and then I was using the pencil tool and um, some existing typefaces and modifying them for these pieces here. And I think I mentioned last week that I I tend to like my artboard is is tidy on the actual canvas, but everything around it is just like <laughs> a hot mess. Yeah, I've got like all my reference images, um, all my you know draft one, draft two, draft mm. thirty thousand kind of going on in the background. I work this way as um, well. I'm curious, chat. Do you guys work in the same way? Um, like just have everything like over on, and then your artboard's like trying to be as neat as possible and then everything outside. I'm curious to see how many of us there are out there because I work in the exact same way. I just think it's so useful to have that stuff handy and accessible, mm. like close by. And also like, I just kind of got here a bit of an evolution of um, my process as well. So like, for example, this is the typeface we started with and then these are my modifications and kind of adjusting it as we go. Um, I think this was maybe roughly where I was up to on this piece last week. And then I spent quite a bit of time um, going and adjusting it and getting it to this point. Um, so there's quite a big, if I just zoom out a bit, you can see there's like quite, uh, quite a leap from the initial sketch to this final piece down here. Mm. And what did you call what did you call it when they have the, a lot of junk in the trunk in this in the bottom? I completely forget. I'm mind blanking, but I, I loved it. it. I call it I called it fat bottom type. Fat bottom type, yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if that's a technical term. Um, it's certainly a fun term to say. It is here. It is officially um, Adobe Live technical term. Yeah, I love it. We've proved it, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just doing some more kind of um, uh, vectoring with just the stroke rather than using the fill. Um, so I laid it all out. Um, I actually decided that from here to here, my layout wasn't working so well. I had a lot of really light looking lettering kind of all on one side and kind of if you squint and look at the dark areas, it was just like a big dark heavy patch here. So to try and break that up and make it a bit more balanced, I've actually just switched this piece and this piece. And you can see that's already given it like way more balance to mm. the overall piece. Um, and then just because it's me, I had to add some sparkles. So I've just nice. kind of where there were a few sort of um, areas of negative space that were a bit too much that I couldn't kind of fill with type. I've just sort of added a few little stars and things in there. 
is is so squinting is when you're looking at type like a, a technique just to kind of like is that something that you'll do oh, when yeah. you're looking at contrast like oh. uh what composition i should say yeah i i do it for weight distribution um right. it's super super handy when you're looking any kind of hand lettering or even type design it's like a really useful thing to do is just to kind of squint this is it's sort of a similar thing to what we were talking about last week where you flip an image or mirror mm. it to just kind of get a sense of the balance of it um yeah i don't know i don't know i'm sure there's some sort of like biological or psychological <laughs> explanation of why that's a, why that's an actually productive thing to do but um i just, just find works. it really useful yeah cool yeah it just works <laughs> um so from there also i should note this is probably like maybe five or six hours of extra work. I don't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> thinking I'd be able to get through all of this in 90 minutes last week while chatting, but anyway. Um, then I just kind of eye drop it a bit of a rough color palette from my reference images, which is this top one here. Um, and then I've kind of just adjusted it, kind of the, the saturation and the contrast just to kind of lift it a little bit. Mm. So, this is me getting the piece, the static piece to a point where I'm happy. And then the final step for me is to go and split all of these different elements into individual layers. My gosh. And this is probably, yeah, this is a really time consuming and quite dull part of the process, but trust me, it is absolutely life-saving when you get to the animating phase of things. This just makes your life so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, what have we got here? We've got like 74 different layers, I think, just in this one piece. Wow. Um, do you have any like shortcuts or ways to do that that you could do it very quickly or do yeah, you have to manually you can, do that? You can um, use this little feature here called release to layers and that will take everything that's on one layer and split her, like split her it off into different layers, but you still have to go through and name them all. Right. And the order that it does it is kind of... Like, it's rarely the order that I want things in, so I <laughs> right. usually really, um, because I kind of want them to be in the order that I've drawn them here, just so that I can easily um, access them. Yeah, so are you, what is, what order do you normally want it? You want it left to right, you know, as you, as you might read it? Is that how your, your mind's working? Maybe the sparkles yeah, on your, at the generally. end or something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what I've got. So I've got my stars and dots down the bottom here. Um, it's basically the order that it's appearing on here, which is not like just whatever order you work in is fine, but just to have some sense of like that it's not total chaos right. and you're taking it to After Effects is a good place to be. Cool. Um, so yeah, once I've done that, I then bring everything into After Effects and um, this interface can kind of look a little bit scary if you've not used this program before. I certainly found it pretty daunting the first few times I used it. Um, but once you kind of play around in it a little bit, it's it's such good fun. Like this is now when I open this program, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make some words move. <laughs> really That's what you want. Um, oh, it's so good. So uh, I've also done a little bit of prep on my file here. When you um, when you initially bring Illustrator files into After Effects. It just by nature automatically makes them all Illustrator layers, layers rather. Um, and I like to, I like them to be shape layers just because then I can kind of play around with them a bit more. Um, but really, all you're doing there is you're right clicking and saying create, and create shapes from vector layer. So if I do that with this background layout, it's it switches it off automatically, but it's basically the same thing. Nice. But it's just now a shape. So I'm just going to lock that one. Um, there are so many things you can adjust and keyframe and animate and make dance a little in After Effects. Um, if you twirl down, so let's just, uh, what should we pick? Let's just pick a letter at random. So let's, we're looking at this part of the R up here. If we twirl down and look in the contents, so anything with this little clock kind of icon next to it is something that you can keyframe and animate. And I think in the default, there's like a whole bunch of um, properties here. 
Um, so like if you want it to move around. And you're you clicking and dragging to the left and left and right, which I've also noticed is something that I think people that are new to After Effects um, struggle with a little bit is because it's like an invisible yeah. interface, right? Like you click it and then you can slide it left and right yeah. but you can change the properties. So that's just in case anyone at home is kind yeah. of thinking, what are you doing there? That's that's what's happening. You can, you can like type in a mm. specific number. Um, if you kind of hover over it, you get sort of the the two arrow icon, which kind of gives you a hint that, they, that right. you can do that. But yeah, you're right. It's not immediately obvious. Um, and then, and then there's also like a million effects over here. Mm. The thing that I want to show you today, which is like the first thing that I ever learned in After Effects and that I use all the time to this day still, that I think is like such a fun tool and has so many uses, um, is a little something called trim paths. Trim paths, so, okay. So trim paths, yeah. So I'm gonna focus on this little area here, this don't be a cheapskate area. Um, and you will, actually, I don't think we even got to that last week, but for reference, this is just a line drawing. So right. I zoom in here. It's just got a stroke applied to it, there's no fill, it's just a line drawing. That's really important for trim paths because you can only sort of do it with line work, not with... Um, not with like a shape. Fill shapes. Right. Yeah. Cool. So... Um, so I should just mention yes. as well, um, just, uh, yeah, we do have a Q&A break. You can see uh, down the bottom uh, below us at the moment, it's like 30 minutes until we're kind of going to take a Q&A break. But feel free to ask questions as we're going along. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else, jump over to behance.net slash live. That's the chat we're using today. Um, but yeah, let us know um, if you have any questions. Actually, there's a really quick one down here by, jo by Johanna in our chat. Are there any letters that you would tackle first because they're more challenging than others? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know that I necessarily do. I think because certainly in the context of this piece anyway, I just want it to go as the eye would read it. So I'm just going to start at the start and finish at the finish. Cool. And the technique that I'm going to show you also sort of lends itself to that. It's, it's kind of what it is going to do is make it look like it's being written on. Right. By hand. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I if there's something that I would have done. I think generally I just go start to finish, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I like that. I start at okay. the beginning and so. I finish at the end. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really rude when you when you paraphrase it like that, doesn't it? I didn't mean to <laughs> That's all I that's that's what I do. <laughs> take all the fun out of it no i totally get what you mean i'm sure everyone gets what you mean it's it's perfect <laughs> um okay so this little guy here this add icon mm -hmm. we're gonna add a trim path so this is where the like secret sauce is here um so that has now given us another little um, menu to twirl down through here um now at the moment i'm just gonna scrub back to um the one second mark my timeline is at about 10 seconds now, but I can adjust that whenever I like. I kind of just pick that number at random. Um, but we're looking at this bowl of the D here. And check out what happens when I adjust the wow. end of this trim path. It's kind of doing it for you. Yeah. So I actually want this to be starting from nothing. So I'm going to keyframe, place a keyframe at the start and the end on 0% for both. And then I'm just going to move along a little bit, pick a, pick a number at random, and then I'm going to boost that start up to 100%. So I've done basically no work. And already, if we just have a look at what's going on here, we've now got this little, whoop, we've now got this little drawing coming to life. So you could just leave it at that. Um, but at the moment, the speed of that animation is uniform, which means it's going at the exact same speed for the whole time. Mm. And very few things do that in real life. Like unless you're a, a robot, everything <laughs> kind of, you, it, it, you, like if you picture yourself drawing this letter, you would start you would start slow, get faster in the middle and then slow down towards the end. Right. 
if that makes sense. So if you would picture yourself drawing like the letter S or the letter O, for example, you kind of, when you're putting pen to paper, you start slow, you're faster in the middle and then kind of slow down as you're finishing the letter. That makes sense. Yeah. So we want to mirror that effect in After Effects. And the way we do that it was, is with this cheeky little um, function called Easy Ease, which is just like, if you take nothing else away from today, this is the thing that is like the most critical that will put the polish on any sort of animation. Um, actually, let me take that off and let's have a look. So this is the speed um, graph editor here. This is showing us the speed at which our animation is happening. If I go back to this view and chuck that easy ease, oops, not that, chuck that easy ease back on. And then we go and look at this. See how it's changed that to this lovely curved graph rather than the mm. straight up. And if I zoom in a little bit, I can actually make this even more exaggerated to give that more of an S kind of curve. So what that's doing is it's slow and then it's speeding up in the middle and then slowing down as it gets to the start, right. uh, to the finish rather. And if we have a look, I don't know if the playback is kind of working at your end there, but if we play that back, maybe I'll zoom out a little. Now we've got a much smoother mm. movement. Yeah. And again, really very little work got into that. Mm. And now the beautiful thing is we can kind of work smarter, not harder. And I can actually um, copy these keyframes. So just I'm doing Command C to copy them. And then I can go into my next piece, which is this second part of the D, the downstroke of the D. Twirl down, add trim pods, go in here. And if I just put my um, playhead at the same point, I'm just pasting the exact same keyframe. So I'm telling it, start at 0%, finish at 100%. It's already got that easy ease applied to it, so I don't have to duplicate that. Mm. And now I've got this kind of happening in both. Oh, cool. And then you can just kind of, I've got about a million layers here, but <laughs> this is kind of the, it's not difficult, but it is quite repetitive, just kind of going through and applying um, this to everything. Mm -hmm. But let's just do the word don't and see how we go. So um, I think this is a good up. question. I'll ask this question now rather than waiting until Q and A because I think this is a good good question as we're talking about type to, to ask at the beginning. Yeah, uh, sure. Ebony was asking, is it hard managing readability and aesthetic when animating type? Yeah, it is. I think that's something you kind of always got to keep in the back of your mind. Right. Because, um, you know, some people say that like good type shouldn't be noticed, that it should be like very plain and very like effortless and kind of in the background and you don't even know that you're sort of interacting right. with it. Okay. I, I think that's appropriate for some sort of stuff. Like if you're doing wayfinding signage, then yeah, it should just be more intuitive. Mm. But I don't necessarily agree that, um, that that is the case for all sorts of typography. Like, I think that that sort of mentality kind of just wipes out any sort of display type. Yeah. I just think display type is so fun and yeah. hand lettering is so fun <laughs> and type should be able to be beautiful and silly and loud and, and detailed and, um, you know, sometimes legibility is not what you're going for. Sometimes you want to make it difficult for someone to read because you want them to take the time to really like explore the image. Right. So yeah, I don't really have any, um, I suppose, hard and fast rules about that. I, I guess the thing that I always come back to is why am I doing what I'm doing? What's the purpose of this piece? Mm. If the purpose of the piece is to, um, you know, be able to clearly explain the dosage of a type of medication, for example, then I probably wouldn't set it in some sort of very flourishy script <laughs> lettering. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But if it's yeah. going to be like 
branding for some arts festival or something, then mm. then it would be appropriate for it to be more decorative and more kind of creative, I suppose. Yeah, I know. I think that. I think yeah. I mean, you said you don't have like a um, like a hard and fast rule for it, but yeah, I think that 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 is a really great um, great perspective on it. That it really comes back to the purpose. Like, what is, what is this for? And um, I think the the question yeah. is around legibility, you know, um, versus aesthetic. And I think it really depends on the brief, how it's supposed to be read. I mean. You know, you, you consider something yeah. like a bus. You consider something like a bus stop. Like you know, if you got traffic driving past, it has to be a certain certain level of legibility and a certain amount of content because people are going past this fast. Whereas, yeah, exactly. You can't have central. like a whole paragraph of text. Yeah, no one's reading that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. It's a really great question when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about type. Is that yeah that whole spectrum of yeah legibility versus? I mean, everything would just be Helvetica or Arial, right? If there was. If there was no exactly. aesthetic, so exactly, yeah. and I mean those are great, but oh, if that's the only thing we're looking at, geez. <laughs> yeah, it's like just eating white bread for the rest of your life. No one wants that. <laughs> no one wants that. Uh, no one wants that. Nevet in chat, learning. I'm new to design. That's awesome. You're in the right place. I hope this helps you out. There was um, this is the second part of a two-part series, by the way, so you can check out um, part one before Wayne Thompson's in the chat as well. Kate Pullen as well. Um, great hey. to see. Great to see hey. you guys here. Hi, Kate. <laughs> Um, so I've just gone and applied that trim path effect to all of the um, little segments of our don't at the top here. Um, so if I just play that, so it's kind of cool, but it's all the same speed and everything's happening at once. So <clears throat> to kind of, I don't know, this is, this is sort of something that I do in um almost any sort of animation if you've got every action happening at the same speed at the same time it's kind of boring and also takes away the effect mm. you want to offset things a little bit because again in real life you know your whole body's not moving at the same speed you know your elbow might go first and then your hands got to catch up and and there's a bit of you know a bit of lag and a bit of momentum that you kind of want to create so um, and the other thing is too, that some of these segments are not the same size. So I'm going to have to adjust the timing for that. So I'm pretty happy with the first one, but let's grab this guy and bring it in a little bit. That's the start of the downstroke on the D. And then I maybe don't want the, what I probably want to happen is for just as this return on the D is hitting that O, I want the O to come down and meet that point at the same time. So I'm going to grab the keyframes on my O and move them back. So I think they're roughly in place there. I'm just using the playhead to really slowly kind of scrub through. I actually think I maybe need to go a little bit further just to kind of um see how they're just kind of kissing at that point there now right this area here maybe i'll zoom in a bit um and the other thing is because i've got this o n and that's one piece what i need to do is actually give this a lot more space to breathe because it's got a lot more area to cover and that's looking way better and so then I maybe don't want the T to kind of go until the end return hits it. Mm. So let me grab my T and bring this down here. And are you Too thinking far. from the very beginning about how long this, like how much time you're giving yourself in the timeline? Like how long is this animation going to be? Are there any rules around I definitely want to keep it at five seconds or I definitely want to keep it at 10 seconds or yeah. Not really. Um, I, I mean, 10 seconds is a pretty long time to be doing this type of animation. Right. Like you can see the, the amount of time I've spent on just getting this word don't to come on. Mm. And we've got a whole other piece to cover as well. Um, I, I generally would usually try and keep it to maybe 10 seconds or less. Yeah. But that's that's totally me just picking a number out of the air based yeah. off 
not much. <laughs> uh, I, I generally like to have my animations loop seamlessly because I think it's nice to have that kind of, you don't know where it starts, you don't know where it finishes, you know, you can kind of trick people into watching the same thing like 30 times because they haven't right. realized that it's looping sort mm. of thing because there's, there's going to be a lot of detail and a lot of um, different moving parts. Um, and for that reason as well, you don't need it to be too long because it is going to just keep looping. Right. Cool. Um, but yeah, you know, more than three seconds, less than 10 ish. Yeah. Cool. So now I've got my end return just kind of, again, I'm just trying to get those, those points to kind of kiss right as that end hits that exit stroke. Right. Which I'm kind of there. And then maybe once we're at that point, then I maybe want the crossbar of my T to come in, which is this guy here. So I'll just bring that right down. And then the apostrophe can probably come in maybe here. Oops. And I can shorten that right down because it's only a teeny tiny little. Um, so you're changing how there. long that's going to take to animate compared to the others because it's shorter. You're going to, you know, it, it's, yep. it's there's so less. The, yeah. Exactly. You know in the same way that, in the same way that I made this O and much longer because it's it's like a much more complicated line. The apostrophe is just like a tiny little squiggle. So we can bring that in. Otherwise, it's, the speed of it is going to be thrown out. So yeah, if I just kind of scrub through this now, you can see that. So we've kind of got the bowl of the D coming back up just to hit the downstroke of the D. And as that kind of kicks up and meets the O, the O kind of comes down to meet that. And then we kind of go through. The O-N does its thing. We've got our little apostrophe coming down. And then just as the N kicks up, it just sort of meets the T. Mm. And then we've got our crossbar happening. Cool. So let's have a look at that. Oop. Where are we? Gone too far. Okay. So you can kind of see the effect is sort of being painted on at different speeds. I just think this is so cool. It's so cool. Yeah, I love this. I love the um, staggering, the animation like technique that like it really adds a lot yeah. to it. Because I know exactly what I've seen it yeah. before. I've done it before where it's just like a very singular anime. It's like, why is this not really? It's not popping, that, as, yeah. as, as, as clients would say. Why is it not popping? Um, <laughs> it feels a little bit like that. Just like, why is this? Oh I'm doing God. everything right. It's all mathematically correct. Yeah. Um, but actually staggering. Yeah. Like so really it's, those, sort of... it's those two little tricks. It's adding the ease to mm -hmm. get the movement change speed as it goes. Mm -hmm. And it's offsetting that movement so that you've got one thing happening and then kind of another thing flowing on from that. And then this kind of lovely sort of domino effect, I suppose, of things happening in a linear sort of a way makes just the world of difference. Like, yeah. like just can take the most simple basic animation from, you know, flat and lackluster to really lively and, and, um, engaging. Oh, cool. Such a good tip. Love it. So I did a little, um, Here's one I prepared earlier because I got a bit excited as I was setting this file up last night and I and also wasn't sure how, how far through we were going to get with this. So I'm just going to do, where is it? No, further up. Um, I actually made a little pre-comp of this, of the whole thing animating. So just the exact same technique that I showed you, but applied to the like 3000 other layers that I had <laughs> in this little segment. Yep. And this is the whole thing writing itself on. Oh, awesome. Isn't that so fun? It looks super cool. Like, um, it's, so, it's so easy. Yeah. So easy and so fun. Steven Chat was saying, uh, I love when neon signs do that, like in movies. Yeah, it does have a real neon sign 
effect to it here. Yeah. Yeah, you could totally take it in that direction. You could like have it flicker and then sort of ride on in that sort of way. Um, Just a couple of things from really chat as well. Out. Yeah, Bar Barry saying trim pass are great. You can do so much with it. Um, Angelica says, hi, yes. hi, Angelica. Uh, just got a call out Wayne Thompson for saying white bread is better than sourdough. Um, Gail agreed. <laughs> um, that's okay. You're allowed to be incorrect in chat. So that's fine. Um, sourdough is amazing. <laughs> Don't know what you're on about. Yeah, sourdough is way better. Wayne, yeah. get out of here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, actually, what I might do is save a new version of this because I don't like doing work and then undoing it. But I am going to um, delete the trim parts that I've made here because I've got my, here's one I prepared earlier, little guy. And I'll mention now as well, we've got about 12 minutes until Q&A or thereabouts. Um, so if you've got any, any, any question about any of the stuff we're talking about today or you'd like to know, anything about sourdough or bread, um, as long as it's not brioche. We're happy to answer those questions. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to do a little technique here, um, which is just like one of the many various things you can do with trim parts. Um, so, sorry, to, just to explain what I've done here, I've actually made uh, a duplicate of that, this little section here, the Don't Be a Cheapskate, and I've essentially gripped it in in um, After Effects. It's called a pre-comp where basically, you know, you can highlight a bunch of layers um, and pre-compose and it will just group it, which it helps in your layer management a little bit because After Effects files can get a little unwieldy just because you've got so many layers. So that's what I've done here is I've just copied those layers and pasted them into a new group. Um, I've highlighted all of these and actually what I want to do is grab, I want to grab this exact pink and I'm going to change, oops, I'm going to change the whole thing to that pink color. Nice, now we're getting real neon. And uh, very neon and I'm just gonna call this guy let's rename it and call it ink cheapskate <laughs> lovely hmm. okay so just going back into that what I'm now gonna do is make a copy of all these layers again go back into my main um, my main timeline window here, paste all of those, and I'm gonna pre-comp these as well. Oops, my windows keep popping up on the wrong display. And we're gonna call this one Orange Cheapskate. And we're gonna go into it, highlight everything. And I want this exact orange here. Just copying that hex code to bring in here. And when I click on the stroke up here, I can universally change all those colors at once, which is a super nice. handy thing to do. Um, and just to kind of show you what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm basically just making duplicates of that um, loaf of bread that I baked earlier <laughs> of this Don't Be A Cheapskate <laughs> animation. Nice. Um, and we're going to do a little cheeky offset here. I don't know. Let's try two frames. And what's going to happen is the pink, where are we? So the pink is going to animate on top of the blue because I've literally just set it on top of itself. Mm -hmm. So it's going to cover up that blue. And then because I've made that orange duplicate on top of that, Right. which I have turned off the visibility of, so that did not work, but let's go again. So the orange is going to chase it along the stroke. Cool. That's awesome. And so before I get too far, let us just do this a couple more times. Go in here, copy everything, go back to here, paste. 
pre-comp. Uh, what do we want now? Yellow. The thing that I'm kind of going for here is like a bit of a um, Um, I kind of want it to go like rainbow along the stroke right. path using the same color palette that I've got in the rest of my pieces. And why is Which that? Is, is that for like color, right like continuity and stuff? Is it, does it have anything to do with like exporting out GIFs or anything or is it aesthetic? No, I'm just trying to match it to the other illustrations that I've yep. done in this piece, just so that it kind of feels like a bit more cohesive. Because at the moment, there's a lot of different styles um, of lettering going on. Like if right. we look, there's at already this, an, a lot of yeah, a lot of contrast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get the colors to kind of marry together to give it a bit more of a um, unified feel. Okay. So we've got blue to pink to orange to yellow. So now we want some green. Oops, so copy, go back into here. The reason you have to copy from inside the pre-comp, like you, you could just duplicate the pre-comp, but whenever you change it, it also changes the original one. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I don't want that. I want them to be different. Uh, pre-comp. Let's go into it, highlight, where's our green, this guy, cool. Cool, actually, I maybe want, I maybe want one more with the blue coming back on. Nice one. I'm just uh, chatting to, to chat, just a reminder that, yeah, we've got Q&A coming up. So if you do have questions around what Sophie's working on now, After Effects, or, you know, any any questions in general, that's our time that we have set aside for that sort of thing. Um, there's some uh, very talented artists and typographers in our chat. So I'm expecting, like, Oh, top, God, no pressure. Top, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between bloody Barry, Wade, and Kate. Exactly. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Give 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 so like an easy question and then like a really difficult one. It got a, it got a low ball <laughs> at the beginning. Ah, uh, ease me into it. <laughs> okay, so I've got. Let's go to one second because our animation doesn't actually start till then. Um, it doesn't look like much at this point, but we've got a duplicate of all of these animations sitting on top of each other in pre comps. And this is again where that offset functionality just like comes in and totally steals the show. Um, let's just go um, maybe three frames. So one, two, three. So yeah, I'm really, just staggering those layers on top of each other. I'm just going to say, I'm really loving the, the color chasing technique. Um, Kate was saying the same thing. Love the color chasing, adds so much depth to the animation. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, the playback is a little bit janky on this end, but you can kind of see That's as awesome. it plays through that we've now got this like crazy wild rainbow neon sort of wonderfulness going on look at that go look at that oh, <laughs> so, so fun cool. this is like this is the payoff of organizing your files in illustrator i feel like you do all that hard work and then you come in here and you do something like this and it's just like oh, magic Love it. organized fun <laughs> oh look at it go look at that <laughs> that's really really cool maybe let's even Maybe let's even make that a little faster. This is something else, like when I first started doing animation, which is not that long ago, but um, I would spend like a million years doing a thing and I would want the emotion to be slow so that everyone could appreciate every little bit of effort uh, that I put into this thing. Right. And that just kills it. Like if you go too slow with something, you just like, you can just like kill the whole 
um, effect. Right. So you look at that when it's sped up, that's just one frame faster. And already that's like, woo, that's here happening. we go. <laughs> so fun. Love it. Let me save this file. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty stoked on that. Yeah, that is awesome. How many colors? How many colors are in there? Is it just? Is it two on top of the original color? Or is it three? No, we've got like we've got pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Oh my gosh! So we've got wow. five colors going. Five yeah. Colors. So if okay. I if I zoom right in, oh, you yeah. can kind of see them going. So we've got we've got all these going here, and I've just got the blue going back on top of itself to just kind of this is where it's going to loop back to seamlessly right. loop back to the start because we started with blue. So if I add that blue chaser at the end, we're now going to start and finish in the same spot, and it's going to make for a really nice um, transition. Cool, because that seamless so that loop, thing, that seamless loop for like online animations for these short animations is like point of entry, right? Like it has to be a seamless loop. Yeah. Like it has to be, yeah. Yeah, seamless loop will get out. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Um, just quickly, I thought what I might do is show you um, just some of the different things you could do with trim piles because mm -hmm. the thing that I've shown you here, like writing it on, writing it off again, is cool. But there's just like there's just like a million different things you can do with it. And such a simple technique, so effective. If you do that ease and you do that offset. Um, this is actually the first animation that I ever made. Um, wow, that's the first that animation you made? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a pretty yeah. high bar that you're setting for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had a lot of help from my friend Michael. Um, nice. But yeah, this is that writing on, writing off. You can add like a bit of kind of fireworks to start to really like punctuate yes. that um, motion to just give it a bit of extra zing. Um, you know, you can do whole paragraphs. On this one, I've added um, a layer on top of it with a bit of motion blur going on. So it kind of looks like a bit of a shooting star sort of right. a vibe. And then with those like sort of sparkling, twinkling um, dots in the background, just sort of adds to that. Mm. It looks like it has like a bit of a gradient like underneath it as well, like a fade out. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. I actually, um, I I literally think that's just like a square that I sat on top of it and set to multiply. Nice. <laughs> but just like getting those layers in order again, being organized in that way, like really makes a big difference. Um. This is that sort of offset principle in motion where you just have that sort of delayed start and finish and it just gives it, it just like lifts it so much. Yeah. And it gives your eye something to, to follow and kind of, yeah, just makes it a bit more interesting. You can also do it like, so you can use this effect on literally any line drawing that is not a shape. So anything that's just a stroke, you can apply that to. So you can do it on illustrations. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And, but again, like you saw how easy it was, right? You literally just like do your first keyframes, copy and paste them onto everything. And then it's just adjusting the timing and the start mm. and finish points of everything. Awesome. Um, you can get a bunch of them going at once and starting and finishing in different places just to kind of add a bit. You can also overlay it with footage. So this is this is kind of something that I'm really interested in lately is blending different types of motions. So adding, you know, actual video footage and then doing some After Effects on top or like blending it with some Photoshop animation, that kind of thing. Like just making it really rich and textured and... Um, That's super cool. This is again just trim piles and some video footage with a bit of a mask going on. <laughs> ah, my A. Oh my God. I it's know, disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's fun. this is kind of, this is similar to what we've just done, which is that sort of rainbow chaser. Oh, amazing. Yeah. But like, it's, it's just such a versatile technique. And if you've never done After Effects before, it's like, 
like that would be my starting point recommendation for anyone is just to like have a crack at doing some trim paths stuff. That is so funny because that was my first question as we went into Q&A, which is, yeah, number one tip. What oh, really? get started with? <laughs> trim you're paths, all, definitely all trim it. paths. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you ready for a couple of questions? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Water break. Have a break. Mm. Um, so yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Chad. It's super cool. Um, yeah, some very talented um, designers in chat today, which is very cool. Thank you for joining us. Um, so let me see if I can pick uh, one of these questions. So considering you already kind of answered that first one, um, Sophie, can you give us an idea of how you think about animation at the time of conceiving a piece of lettering? How does the animation change oh, yeah. the type lettering you do? And then you get bonus points if you can guess who asked the question. Ooh, okay. Well, let me start with the, the answer to it. Sure. Um, th this is kind of just going back to my thing of why are you doing the thing you're doing? Mm. Um, you need, you kind of need to have um, that be your guiding star. Why are you doing this piece? And that will often um, inform, I suppose, a lot of those questions as to what style you should do, what type of animation lends itself to the piece that you've done. Um, with um, with this piece I've got here, there's like quite a lot of different styles going on, but you can see that sort of like mono weight script style. It just it just naturally lends itself to that style of being written on with the trim parts really, right. really easily. It just feels right with it. You can't sort of shoehorn in, and and this is this is something that. Um, that I think a lot about, even just with static pieces. You know, if you're drawing a script font and you're trying to do like a lovely big flourish, it can't look too forced. Right. Otherwise you just don't buy it. It just feels awkward. And it's, it, this is maybe a bit of an abstract answer to the question, I'm sorry, but it's the same sort of principle where it just has to feel like it belongs to that style that you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And we were talking a little bit about it in the in the previous episode when you were kind of mapping mapping these out and because you were obviously you're trying to demonstrate a couple of different techniques for us which is awesome um but yeah you clearly yeah. were thinking about it at the you know at the beginning of this piece you know if it's going to be handwritten yeah, kind yeah. of style thing um, and i'm sure there's a lot of experimentation happening i mean you haven't been animating for all that long uh, i'm sure there's still tons of experimentation that you're doing going what if oh, i did this in this the way number or, of, yeah. the number of times that i've started doing something spent i don't know eight hours animating it and going it's just not the right style of animation for this the movement is wrong it's mm. not saying what i need it to say i have to scrap this and start again that happens all the time mm. so while I do try and think about it a lot at the start of a piece, you're right. Sometimes you just have to experiment and see if it works or not. Um, sometimes that's just the easiest way to see if it's going to work. I say easy and you, you lose eight hours, but you know, <laughs> that's time spent learning, you know, it's not totally wasted. Um, but yeah, like when I was, when I was doing the, this piece last week, I obviously had certain animations in mind which is why i kept for example the script as stroke rather than shape mm. and um we'll do some photoshop animation after this but again i had that at the front of my mind as i was drawing the piece which we'll kind of go into more um a little bit later awesome um great uh so was that was that kate was that from kate it was wayne uh, ah! <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna kill you. Um, I like this extra bonus round. Um, so again, you need you need to guess the the person asked the question because it's someone you know. Um, do you oh, have any God. any okay. tips for animating solid letter shapes as opposed to line art? Yeah, heaps, heaps and heaps. Yep. Um, the little twirl down menu that we looked at at the start when we first dived into After Effects, mm. all of those properties will work for solid shapes if you want to do it in After Effects. So you can like play around with the scale. You can, if we've got time, I might jump in and do that at the end. Mm. But um, yeah, otherwise doing it in Photoshop um, is also a really nice way to kind of get around that. Mm. Um, you can do you can do stuff with masks in um, After Effects as well. That's kind of a lot more suited to um, 
to solid shapes rather than stroke. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. And we're going to jump just, into some Photoshop stuff here as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, any guesses on who asked that question? Will I go on to the next one? <laughs> Is it Wayne again? Is Wayne just writing in all? Is it only Wayne in the comments? <laughs> that would be like a fun twist, but no, that was Barry. Great question, Barry. Thank you very much. <laughs> both of you. Um, <laughs> when, uh, maybe one more question, because I'm always conscious of time. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a great question, guys. Thanks, um, having a lot of fun. Uh, when ideating uh, what you'll do for a piece, how do you visualize your animation so the cl uh, to the client so that they might uh, best understand what you'll be going for? Mm -hmm. That's a really tough one because um, obviously you don't want to go too far down the road of spending all this time animating if they're just going to say, that's actually not at all what I pictured. Right. Um, storyboarding is a really useful um, technique for that. Just like kind of giving a few keyframes and just describing what the detail, like what the movement will be. Mm. I also try to show examples of past work where I'm like, so this is the type of movement it will look like just to kind of accompany those storyboards because it can sometimes be hard to sort of visualize how that animation is going to work. Um, but yeah, storyboarding, lots of describing, lots of examples. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I guess, um, you know, I've had other artists as well come on and talk about like doing personal work that is pushing and experimenting with things um, is a really great way. Obviously, then when a client comes to you and say, hey, actually, I've been doing this lately, or you can send them an example. So even if it wasn't something, it was like a paid commission piece of work, you're, you know, you've got that reference as well. And you're like, actually, I can do this. And here's an example. Do you want something like this? And they might say, oh, yeah, something yeah. like that would be fantastic. And you're like, boom, you already know you can do it. You can do it a bit, a bit faster and more efficiently and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and those things feed into each other really beautifully too, because often the client will have seen that work that you've done just for fun and been like, course, yeah. I love that. Can yeah. you do that? Mm -hmm. So it sort of works in both directions as well. Um, I, I am a big advocate of just making stuff for fun. Yeah. Like this, this, I'm probably going to spend the rest of the day working on this just because I really want to see what it looks like at the end. Nice. Um, and, and it's fun and I'm learning and, you know, it's building portfolio. It's, it's a piece I can showcase all of those things. Like it's just, yeah. there's so much value to be gained from doing that sort of thing. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing, you know, doing so much and sharing so much, uh, with us on Adobe live. Yeah. We're going to jump into to part two. We're going to play around with Photoshop. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Uh, so Let's we'll jump back it. over to your desktop. Thanks so much for the questions, everybody. It is really great to have you here with us. Um, and uh, just because the Q&A portion is over, don't feel like you can't ask questions as we're going along. We'll try to answer them um, as best we can. But yeah, there's some wonderful questions in there. Top level. Oh, you didn't guess that. You didn't guess, guess the last person. It was Lingy. I'll just move on. It was oh, Lingy. No. Thanks for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if you have a personal connection to this person in chat. Too, I'm really so. bad at this game. I'm no good at this game. Um, that's right. You're okay. fantastic at type and design really? and animation. So that's cool. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Um, so let's just have another quick look at our reference static image here. Um, the piece that I'm going to focus on now when I jump into Photoshop is this little um, hot pink section down at the bottom. So what I want for this piece to do is to kind of morph from by into now. So it's going to go by now, by now, by now, kind of on a loop. So what I have done is I brought my, um, literally just copied those and pasted them into a Photoshop file um, and separated these out into different layers. And this is like, it's so analog, it's so basic, but again, really good fun. And when you see it come to life, just like the most rewarding kind of <laughs> thing ever. Um, so and so on those actually... layers, that's just by and now and by and now and by and now, like just all so spread only... across. Actually, let me do am, I, am I getting ahead? You're getting ahead. Come on, okay. David. All right. I'm sorry. I'll just turn, I'll turn my mic off. Hang on. Give me five minutes. I'm time out myself. <laughs> um, 
Uh, most of these are empty layers. I've just sliced them up ready for me to draw on. All of all of these ones up here are empty layers. The only stuff that has content is this background, which maybe I'll chop back on just so I can see it in context. And then I've got um, I and I've got now. So what I want to do is I might just turn down the opacity of that by layer and I'm going to turn down now even more. And I'm literally just going to use the brush tool. Let's give ourselves, yeah, that all looks good. So I've eye drop with the pink. Oops. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm just going to extend this out so I can kind of see both um, the by and the now. So what I'm going to do here is create a series of drawings that will morph from by into now. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a, it's a pretty basic sort of animation technique. I think it's called like pose to pose where you know where you're starting and you know where you're finishing and you're just kind of drawing the in-between frames. Right. Um, you, you can do this in, um, you can do this in After Effects. You can animate the path and just like move the anchor points and animate it that way. But I find this effect is just like a bit more, a bit more fun, I suppose. Um, so again, I'm just using um, my iPad with um, the AstroPad app, which is mirroring it to my iPad and then just drawing on it that way. Cool. So there's really no like, this is, this is like a very fast and loose kind of method. So let's just, let's just have a crack at it. So we're starting at by, so we kind of want it to look, oops, we want to be on this layer. We kind of just want it to look roughly B-ish. Um, Neveb was just as, as yeah, just, you're doing that. Um, I thought After Effects uh, was something used for VFX and stuff, but it's amazing. And your work on Instagram is awesome, um, which is a very Aww, nice comment. Thank you. But yeah, I think that is, that is kind of um, can be a misconception because, um, you know, some people have it with Photoshop as well. Like, uh, but particularly After Effects, because it, it, it can do so much, it can be extremely overwhelming. Um, uh, you know, uh, but it's, it's one of those apps where it depends on what you're using it for. Um, and not to get overwhelmed by yeah. all the menus and all the things that can happen and really just focus on um, your end goal and the purpose of, of the piece. Um, and you can figure it out pretty quick. I think you'd be surprised. Um, so what I'm kind of doing here, this looks a bit, um, a bit odd, but I'm basically just trying to in between these frames a little bit. So I know that I'm starting from B, B U I, and we want the, the B to morph into an N. We want the O to morph into a U and we want the Y to morph into a W. So I will also add that this this technique can be maybe I'll just do this like real fast and loose because um, it's quite a forgiving technique just because of how um, quick the frames move. Right. Uh, so question in chat, hey Soph, uh, it's from Kate, hey Soph, noob here, <laughs> could you talk uh, a bit yeah. more about AstroPad? Is that something you use a lot? Uh, and Barry was oh, asking yeah. the same question, so yeah, yeah, maybe you could tell us a bit about how the AstroPad works. Yeah, I use it all the time. Um, I mean, if you've got a Wacom or something like that, it's basically the same thing, but it's, it's literally just mirroring what's on my screen on my iPad, which means I can draw on it, but I'm drawing on the screen in Photoshop. So I guess it's kind of like a halfway point between um, like having a Wacom or having a touch screen, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but I find it really useful because I like being able to draw on top of what I'm looking at rather than drawing here and having to watch the screen. Yeah. Yep. 
Like I just, mm. I don't know. I just, maybe I don't have very good hand-eye coordination and I just need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's our first frame. I'm actually going to turn this one off because I'm, I'm aiming to get to something that's morphed into now. And let's just say morph. And another thing that's really useful here is this thing called onion skins, which um, oh. you don't have to use, but is like, just a really handy thing. So when you've got lots of frames, it just lets you see the frame before it. Um, so you kind of have a reference point. So let's go next frame. Where are we? Cool. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, Luke, Luke in chat was mentioning, uh, yeah, is AstroPad free? because Sidecar and Catalina does the same thing. So AstroPad is, there's a free version, but I think it's a trial, <laughs> but it is a paid app. Um, we've used it before. Um, yes, but Sidecar and Catalina, it does the same thing. Yeah, I haven't actually tried it. So if have you tried Sidecar and Catalina? No, I haven't. Um, but that sounds, that sounds great if it's, if it's free and does the same thing. I haven't tried it myself, but yeah, I think it's just baked in. Um, is that like a recent thing? Is that like a recent update or has that been around forever? It's quite recent, I think, yeah. I'm just gonna straighten this up a little bit because I think it's maybe, I've maybe gone a little bit too far here. Yeah, cool. Um, there's a question from Ebony. What's the timing on your frames and how do you get the timing between Photoshop and After Effects to play nice in the finished piece? Yeah. Yeah, I guess the trick is just having your frame rate set at the same. So I'm doing, I think, 24 frames per second on right. both so that I know that they'll talk to each other. Um, I also actually... I'm just going to turn this off and do this the old school way and just turn this opacity down. There we go. Um, yeah, you can you can do it that way. Um, for these layers, I've just got them set at about, I think these are just two frames each. So like animating on the twos or you can animate on the threes, I guess. So I have it three frames per, per right. chunk. I find that two or three is generally like a pretty good um, a pretty good sort of standard for this kind of thing, just because, as I say, you don't you don't need it to be too seamless. Like the effect that I'm going for with this particular um, style is not super polished. Mm. So I think having it, you know, you could you could animate every single frame individually, and you could have a higher frame rate and it would look really seamless, but um, that's not really the effect that I'm kind of looking to achieve here. So again, I'm just kind of trying to do these like in between frames. Um, uh, Sufian is saying this technique is like 2D animator mode, animating in between frames. The it's more so in is. between, yeah. uh, the more smoother animation we get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's spot on. Um, it's really lo-fi. Like, it's it's very very lo-fi technique. Um, 
but I find it kind of charming for that reason. Mm. And I also find you have a lot of control over it as well. Like, you know, you can really be very intentional about um, where all of your um, transitions are happening. Mm. Yeah, it has like a really lovely aesthetic. Um, I think we've had, I can't remember who it was now, it might have been Bill Hope on who was doing a bit of it. Um, just saying like, it, once you start looking for it, you realize actually there's a lot of it. Like it's almost like a resurgence. It's like retro animation I am, or something like that. Yeah. Which is really cool yeah, that you use. Yeah, it totally is. It's cool that you use both as well. So you have After Effects to the more powerful, really smooth, really crisp, um, you know, vector based, super smooth, buttery animation. And then, yeah, I want something a bit more rough yeah. to break it up. and. Um, it's really cool that we're learning that f uh, from you because it's great that there's a time and a place for different types and different techniques. Buttery, buttery is such a great word for the type of um, After Effects stuff because you're right, it is, it's really smooth movements, like the transitions are very slick. Mm. Um, and this is like way jankier. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was just thinking about butter because we're but, talking about bread. For I like something. it a lot. Mmm, butter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can kind of see I've maybe um maybe kind of gone a little bit quick with the in-between frames here, but the good thing about this method too is that because I you can actually do this on a video layer rather than um, just like regular image layers in Photoshop. And that will just give you one um, layer in your timeline down the bottom. But I find that a little bit harder to go back and edit. I actually like having all my individual images as separate pieces that I can then go and adjust the length of or rearrange or duplicate or, um, you know, edit the, edit the colors or, right. you know, anything you can do in Photoshop, you can do with these layers, which is a really nice um, thing to be able to do. And you probably only really, really need, I don't know, like five or six images to morph from one to the other to see if you want it to be quite quick. So like you can see we're almost there now. Sidecar doesn't work on your Mac, Gail's too old. Oh, sorry, the Mac's too old. That's a shame. Um, that can happen, kind of, like new stuff comes out. And it's funny how, like, the new stuff comes out and probably, makes, makes the old hardware out of date. Um, and Martha, that's before probably I probably how I ended oh, sorry, on this so. app. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say, because my, my poor Mac's getting a bit long in the tooth now, so... Yeah, mine has, mine's not that old, and my it, it seems to uh, seems to decide to crash when it's not plugged in for some reason. So I've got a lot of work to do. I think. Oh, that's handy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're doing anything important, like streaming live or anything. Right. Oh no, my PC is fine. PCs PCs are streaming. Oh, based. okay. Yeah, my Mac's just for right. All, okay. All my, all my work. Um, yeah. Right. Jump between the two. <laughs> so I'll let you guys know we've got about 12, 13 minutes left. So if you do have any final questions, um, drop them in. quite therapeutic doing this too there's something like really mm. like it's like coloring in for adults in. like and it's, it's awesome because if you in. go outside your your lines you're like yeah i meant to do that yeah i did that on purpose yeah 
<laughs> you can't ruin the end of the textures or anything by pushing too hard because you it's all digital. I know. And then you get like a sick animation at the end that's like <laughs> extra reward. It's great. I love it. All right, let's maybe do one more just to close those little gaps and then I reckon we're pretty much there. in chat i'm so glad you record these i miss the beginning i'm such an after effects baby uh yeah so everything uh, no. that is live here um, is available on demand we usually um recommend going to the um adobe asia pacific youtube channel um johanna maybe you can share that link in chat for us um it's just a little bit easy to navigate and it'll have all of the artists that we've that we've had on um, it, Behance has is great, but there's so much content going on right now with so many people streaming that after about a day, <laughs> like everything gets like pushed off. Um, so yeah, if you oh, want to watch no. stuff on demand, um, I'm sure there's lots of people watching this on demand right now uh, on YouTube as well. Not right now, right now, but in there right now, right now. Um, Ooh, that makes sense, right? You found a you found a tear in the time space continuum. <laughs> I, I did. I'm in the future. Um, yeah, so you can watch everything. <laughs> everything we've done is up is is up there. Um, there's quite a lot on After Effects in there. Um, yeah, so check it out. And this is part two, by the way. I'm so just in case much... you missed that, um, so there is a part one as well. Um, and these two episodes go very well together. Like we planned it. <laughs> Um, I am very much an After Effects baby as well, if that is any comfort. Um, but even just knowing like the tiniest little techniques is like, it's just so motivating seeing new stuff come to life mm. in that way. Like I find the more I do, the more I want to do because I'm like, wow. Oh, what can I, what can I learn next? Like, what's the next cool thing that I can make? How good's that? Like, how good is it that there is something that you're doing uh, that like, you're just so passionate about? Like, as you were saying, like after this, you're probably just gonna like spend like the rest of your day knocking it out. Like that's, it's, it's so cool. And it can be part of your work and part of your lifestyle and, you know, lead, lead to work and also learning things and having fun. It's pretty, pretty wild. I am. Yeah, very aware of how um, how lucky I am in that respect. Because yeah, it's pretty pretty unreal to be doing like fun stuff for work. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just turning the opacity of all these layers back up and let's bring that off one. What have we got there? Okay. And I'm just going to chuck, where do we get to? So we've only done five kind of in-betweens, but That's so cool. This is the, this is the like, ah, moment. Um, this is the payoff where you get to be like, oh, damn, this actually is like looking pretty cool. Nice. You're like, oh, I hope, I mean, it's a little easy because these are like three letter words, but you're like, oh no, I made a spelling mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, that is the worst. <laughs> that is the worst. Oh, there's just no coming back from that when it's hand lettered to you like. <laughs> I just got to do this from scratch again, I guess. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> so let's let that play. That's cool. That's so cool. 
And so probably what I would do here, um, probably what I would do is make a duplicate of all of these morph layers. Actually, why don't I just do it? Because then we can see it in action. So we want to, we don't want that top one. What is that's actually we don't need these, so let's delete those. Oh, what is that? Nothing. Um so we want our morph layers from here. I'm just gonna duplicate layers up here. That's fine. And what I want to do is let's just reorder this stuff so that we're looking a little more organized. And then we're kind of just doing a bit of a reverse order here. So I'm just arranging them in that reverse order. This does not need to be that long. But this guy can be a little longer, just so we're pausing on that sort of in-between point. And while we're at it, let's make the, the first guy a little bit longer too. See, this is, this is the kind of section where having them as individual layers, I find really handy to tweaking things and moving things around and right. playing with timing and stuff. Um, okay. So now we just got this guy kind of boomeranging between the two. Nice. Which is super fun. Probably what I would do um, and what I will do is actually redraw this first frame maybe three or four times as it is. So I would just trace over it and then redraw it and redraw it. And there would be some subtle differences in um, just the shape of them. So it would sort of give it a bit of a jitter, I suppose, right. if that right. makes sense, rather than just being a static image. I don't want it to ever be just sitting still because then your eye notices when the animation switches on and I want it to just be this kind of seamless looping right. um, kind of moment. And at the moment we've got this lovely morphing movement, but then it just, it's like moving, 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 stop, moving, 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 stop. Right. And I want it to just be a kind of constant but I mean, even without it, it's still pretty fun. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I really like it. Can you imagine and then you if can like imagine when we stores... bring this into... Oh, yeah, you go. Sorry, I was going to say something stupid. No, no, your thing sounds more exciting. <laughs> no, it's not. It was. I was just going to say, imagine if like animation, <laughs> like was in the, was, you know, animation was in the hands of the folks at Chemist Warehouse and it was just like not only like the super bright colors and everything, but also everything like animated <laughs> <laughs> just popping at you. Do you know what? I might swing by there later on today and just take this along and be like, hey yes. guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't I real, how are we going for time? We've Shall got I like do a real quick? five minutes until like a pretty hard cut. So very quickly okay. to run out. Let of me do a real, I'm going to do a real quick, um, oops, no. Cut it there, please. Um, a very, very quick, I promise it will be quick. Just to sh kind of show you what I mean. Oops. Um, you've been awesome as well today, chat, both in early, early morning stream and, and also here. Super cool. I love it when an artist comes on and brings other artists on 
um, like from the community, uh, which is super cool. So thank you, thank you for jumping in, um, asking some great questions as well. Uh, Lingi Chan is saying, this is my first Adobe Live. I just wanted to say all the moderators and admin are fantastic. Uh, wicked content, well, thank you very much. Um, if you want to kind of hang out with us a little bit more outside of the live stream schedule, we also have a Discord. So we hang out in there, um, learn from each other, just kind of kind of hang out around the live stream. So if you want to jump in, I'm sure Johanna is going to share that um, before the end of today. So feel free to jump in there, say hello. Uh, if you haven't used Discord before, um, don't be too intimidated. Um, yeah, just jump in. It's just a chat chat thing and we share. Sometimes we do little mini off off live streams as well. Johanna has been doing a lot of those, playing around with some apps and everything like that, different challenges and things. Uh, and of course, we'll let you know when we, whenever we go live with someone as amazing and awesome as Sophie here. Aww, <laughs> thank you. Um, so all I'm doing here is I'm just tracing over my, oh, geez. I'm just tracing over my, um, sorry, I accidentally turned that's Siri Siri on. trying to get involved? <laughs> yeah, I know, so rude. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> that doesn't happen on a wake home, I bet. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I'm literally just tracing over my initial reference image, which I would, I would do a few times to, um, to kind of give me that. It's, it's only going to be really minor, but it will make the world of difference. Um, when you kind of get a few of them going. Right. You can kind of see here, like even just having that little movement between the two, as opposed to just being stuck on this static thing. If I had like four or five of these versions, just kind of doing a little, a little bit of a shuffle on top of itself, um, it's just gonna give me a nice bit of movement before we morph into, um, the next word yeah. and also the other thing you can do here is i might i might go back and decide oh i could probably do an in-between frame between this one and this one for example literally just add another layer here and then shuffle all these things down mm. um so it's quite forgiving in that respect too like you can just play around with it a great deal what i might do just quickly is show you some um photoshop animation examples that i've done before just to kind of give you Again, a sense of where you can take it. I really love it. You know, it we've got about two from... minutes left, so just to be the timekeeper, time <laughs> <on> it. <laughs> it'll cut us off, and I don't want to just no get worries. cut off. I want to make sure we thank, we thank you, and everything. That's all. Um, it's just a really fun technique when you when you're morphing from um, shapes that don't necessarily kind of blend together terribly mm. well. And even if it's just really subtle movement, like in this one, I've just used, I think maybe a textured brush mm. and have done that thing that I just talked about. We're drawing the same thing on top of itself a few times to give it that sort of That's great. You know, textured movement. It's also really fun for confetti. I love doing these confetti animations. So cool. Super fun. And you can just kind oh, of take wow. it wherever you want. This is all Photoshop. This is all Photoshop. Wow, super cool. Exact same technique. You just, you know, drawing the in-between frames. So yeah, these ones are actually kind of a blend of um, After Effects and Photoshop, which is something right. I'm starting to do a little bit more of is like picking where in the narrative I want something to be a bit more textured versus where I want it to be really smooth it's not and fixed. doing it in I love this one. I have this. I have a file in my uh, from you uh, with all, with with all of your work, and they're, they're oh, labeled yeah. they're labeled correctly. And I just keep saying like snot face and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I am going to have to fade <laughs> us over so that we're big big Sophie and big Flynn because uh, you have to thank you because we are going to get cut off. Thank you so much. I've had a great time hanging out with you here on Adobe Live last week and this and today were fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been incredible. Uh, it's been such a pleasure. I've had like so much fun doing this and really appreciate you having me on. Yep. 
Awesome. Um, I'm sure we'll have you back on again. Uh, thank you, everybody in chat. It's been awesome. Everyone that joined us today and also this week. We'll be back next week with lots of creative content. Jump in our Discord. Follow Sophie on Instagram to check out more of her amazing work. And Sophie, once again, thank you so much. Thanks, Lynn. See you later. See ya.